Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Our scripture reading is Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, and Matthew 13, 44 through 52. Our verse from Proverbs is that favor and charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain. The woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Um, again, favor, or translated charm, is deceitful, and beauty is vain. The woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. This is a great uh, verse um, as a standard for what a good woman is. Um, and it says very clearly that the first and foremost uh, virtue should be fearing the Lord, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, secondary to that would be the charm and the beauty that a woman has. There is no doubt that there is just a feminine characteristic of both beauty and charm that uh, women possess. Um, but that is uh, not the first and foremost um, or the greatest thing about a woman because we see that charm can be used for deceit and beauty is in vain. And so first and foremost, uh, fear of the Lord and then um, the charm and the beauty. Now charm and beauty can definitely be used and this is why it says that it can be deceitful and in vain because a woman could use her charm and her beauty of course uh, are, are misused that I guess to get power and then a man looking at a woman's charm and beauty could misuse that and objectify the woman and and use those things for pleasure and so charm and beauty we see can be, be used maybe perhaps or misused for power or for pleasure now in our society uh, we have, I think, reduced it even further. It's not so much charm and beauty that people look for in a woman, but unfortunately, instead of fearing the Lord first and then maybe charm and beauty second, they would be looking for something else, which would be maybe a woman that is sexy or a woman that is hot. And these are the things that are glorified in our society. Really, what is glorified in Scripture especially in Proverbs, is that a woman, what is glorified is a woman that fears the Lord and then a woman that uses her charm and her beauty uh, for good. Um, it says also in Proverbs that uh, someone that finds this woman, her husband entrusting his heart to her has an unfailing prize. And this, this then takes us to the gospel where Matthew says that when a man finds the hidden treasure in the field, um, he will sell everything that he has to purchase the field so then he can unearth that treasure. And this is what we see in relation, I, I want to kind of share maybe three analogies here and related to the treasure in the field. Um, the first, I, I want to just present the spiritual that, and, the, and Gregory the Great talks about this, that the treasure is our desire for heaven. So the treasure in the field is our deep desire for heaven. This is characterized by the theological virtue of hope. And then field, the field is our earnest observance. It's everything that surrounds that desire. So if you think of kind of um, in the middle of a circle, you would have a desire for heaven and then outside of that, surrounding it like a fence and protecting it. So this is the one thing necessary, Jesus Christ and our desire to stay united with Jesus Christ. And of course, unity with the Blessed Trinity for, all, for now and for all eternity. That's our desire, the desire for unity with the Blessed Trinity. We must protect that. That's the one thing necessary. And so around that uh, hidden treasure, we have to put the field uh, of protection, almost like a fence. And that is the observance of the commands, and that is staying in the state of grace. Um, and we have the sacraments to help us do that. I want to give two other analogies that, that this can be used. Uh, I think a great analogy is a pregnant woman. Um, what is the hidden treasure in that woman is new life, right? Um, from the moment of conception going forward, you have uh, this baby that is the hidden treasure within the womb of the woman. And, and that baby has to be protected. So the hidden treasure has to be protected by the, the, the field, uh, I guess, yeah, the field of, of the womb. And so there are certain things that, of course, a woman will do to protect that life. And in our society, we should have laws that protect that hidden treasure, the baby that is within the womb. Um, and that, that treasure needs to be protected, of course, for those nine months, um, but also protected within law. And then another analogy uh, that I'd like to give is, is marriage. And marriage, um, the sacrament is called matrimony. 
And that word matrimony comes from a Latin word, matris, matris munis, matris munis. So you can kind of see how that, that word matris munis is matrimony. Um, the center of matrimony, matris munis, means the office of the mother. Um, so marriage, matrimony, is named after the office of the mother. And what is the role or the office or the duty of the mother? It is to conceive, to bring forth life, and to train or to educate that life. What a beautiful thing that the hidden treasure of matrimony is the office of the mother. The, the mother's role to bring forth, to conceive, bring forth, and then to train life. And so the hidden treasure of, of matrimony, of marriage itself, is life. The center of marriage is life. And there must be a field of protection around that. Um, and the field that protects that is, in fact, the marriage itself, um, the, the father, the, the family. And so there's a hedge of protection. Uh, particularly the husband's job to protect that office, to protect that mother and her role. And, and how does the husband do that? But by providing and protecting. A beautiful example of this, going from kind of the center out, uh, the office of the mother and then out to that providing and that protection, which would be uh, the, the field, um, would be the Holy Family. Who do we see um, kind of on the, the outside protecting the Holy Family but St. Joseph? And so he is the provider and the protector. And then, of course, as we move inside that, who is the one that will conceive, bring forth, and train? That's Mary, the mother of God. And then who is inside her womb but Jesus Christ, who is the hidden treasure, who is the one thing necessary. And so this is so important that we see that the hidden treasure analogy in this gospel can be definitely seen on a spiritual level, but also on, on the level of life, whether it be the dignity of life, a life within the womb, um, or also um, family life. And so this is a great thing. Now, uh, we see in St. Anne, who is a wonderful example of this, that Anne, who is the mother of Mary, um, she's a great intercessor for this, as well as Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary. There's a, a picture of St. Anne. It's actually an icon, icon that I love, that St. Anne, um, on, on her lap um, is Mary, and then on the lap of Mary is Jesus. So you have uh, Jesus, who is being nurtured and cared for by Mary, and then Mary, who is being nurtured and cared for by St. Anne, and of course, St. Joachim as well. So we ask for St. Anne, who is the mother of Mary and the grandmother of Jesus, to pray for us and pray that we can um, uphold the dignity of every woman, that we can uphold the dignity of marriage and family, and then the sacredness of life within the womb. Thank you for joining me for Lexio on the go. Please take the time to check out Beanwell Coffee, as well as uh, Remnants Chaplet of Divine Mercy, Oratory Prayer Resources, which is a book, CD, and also prayer cards, and Link to Liturgy, which provides uh, gospel resources which are fast, free, and faithful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.